There are two things that Per Larson wants you to know. The first is this, which I'll let him tell you in his own words. Just like you, I firmly believe that it is possible to slow, halt, or reverse mild cognitive impairment. But the second thing he wants you to understand is that he is not some renowned physician or neuroscientist. As he puts it, I am by no means a superman or genius. I'm just an ordinary guy with MCI. Yet like other people I've been talking about lately, he has been able to significantly reverse his MCI which is why I'm so glad that he's willing to share his story with you today in his own voice. Hi, I'm Tony Daring of GoCogno.com, the website for people with mild cognitive impairment. I recently did a two-part series on some of the more common ways that I have seen real people in the real world slow, halt, or reverse their MCI and I presented them in this set of tiers, at least two of which really hit home to purr. I love to hear from people who watch these videos, and I love to be reminded every now and then of how far flung my audience is. Uh, much of it is here in the United States, but also in Canada, Great Britain, Australia, and elsewhere. So when I'm interacting with someone, they might be from Delaware, or they might be from Denmark, which is where Per lives. He's 70, and he was diagnosed with MCI in 2003. Back then, that was seen as a death sentence. The presumption was that MCI automatically led to Alzheimer's and there wasn't anything to be done about it other than get your affairs in order. We know better now, and fortunately, Purr didn't accept that back then. He chose to defend his cognition and was gradually able to halt his cognitive decline and even begin to improve. But all the years, I seemed to work it out and got gradually better functioning day by day and year by year. Per and I correspond occasionally, and after these recent videos, he sent me a couple of lengthy emails, which I just had to share with you. Because when it comes to slowing, halting, or reversing MCI, I don't want you just to know that it can be done. I want you to hear from people who have actually done it. Plus, per story so perfectly fits two of the most important points I made in those videos. The first is the idea, borrowing from that famous line in Casablanca, that you want to round up the usual suspects. In the case of MCI, the usual suspects are diet, physical activity, restorative sleep and stress management. Per knows that because that's his story. He says, I'm one of the usual suspects. For my case, it's a common sleep disorder, OSA, that is somehow treatable if discovered and treated in the early stages. But the other thing that Per really wanted to echo was the idea of identifying your number one. You are the only person who has your version of MCI. It's unique to you and to address it, you want to identify what makes you most vulnerable. In Per's point of view, that's the top priority. One, find the main reason first. I believe that if you don't find and deal with the most significant reason at first, nothing else you try will ever reverse or halt your MCI. Now, Per had much more to say than that. And in one of his emails, he very saliently laid out what he thinks anyone with MCI needs to know. It's so good 
I share it with you in detail in the text below. I also did a little Q&A with him talking about his diagnosis and how he was treated and the struggles he still has cognitively and what he's up to today. So now he spends his time writing books like this one, which I'd love to read, but it's in Danish. He says he also enjoys building guitars and playing a little music, which he demonstrates here, playing a homemade guitar. I encourage you to read his words below, and I leave you with this parting thought from Per. So I also believe that to succeed in repairing your own brain, you'll first of all have to make a decision. The decision to act. And the decision to give yourself the permission to try, no matter what others may think and no matter what the odds may be. These days, the odds of that are actually good. I hope something in Per's story inspires you to do what he did, to act, to defend your cognition. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you again next week. Until then, as always, be kind to your mind.